I'm a woman's health and fitness coach, and I help women get super strong, find confidence in their body, and build a really strong metabolism. And I'm here with Allie, and you can introduce yourself. I'm Allie. I am also a women's health and fitness coach. I focus a lot um, on working with women who are in their 30s, and they want to feel like their best self possible. I feel like a lot of the times people are like, oh, your 20s are great. And like, no, your 20s are not that great. Like being in your 30s is awesome. You get to like be in your prime. And that's where I help women like stop fearing carbs, figure out their confidence in the gym. Um, you know, we align on a lot of the things we teach. And that's why this live is going to be a lot of fun. I know. A topic pe people feel maybe they're going to be a little bit triggered on because we're calling them out. But it's also really good just to create awareness around this topic because I'm sure you would agree with this. Like if we can give our clients and people out there all of the information, then they can make a decision based on what feels good for them. And like, that makes me feel really, really good knowing that they can make a decision that serves them. So. Yeah. 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 I agree. And just to give you guys like a brief overview of what we're going to talk about, I'm very much of a good list maker. So that's what I'm currently reading off of. <laughs> Um, we're going to be talking about our positions on alcohol coming from someone that's six years almost hasn't had a drink um, and then someone who does have alcohol in their life and you not uses it but uses it I guess uses it drinks it um, and we're talking about the mindset around drinking things that we see pitfalls or clients fall into um, and then also like what should you drink if you do want to have a drink that's not going to like completely ruin your goals. That's what we'll be talking about today. If you have any questions on alcohol, questions about what we're talking about after you watch this, you can comment it below, um, and we can, we're going to be answering them, you know, throughout whatever if we see them posted later. Yeah. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is just our positions on alcohol. Do you want to go first? Yeah, totally. So, so I am – I will be 26 in May. So I – feel like I fall into this category where I'm still in a position where people are like socially drinking a lot more. Um, and that's not everybody, but that's just a lot of the people that, you know, I follow, I'm friends with, etc. And about, you know, six months a year ago is when I started to take a look at like my own personal goals. And I'm like, mm, probably drinking more than I should to be able to attain certain goals. And I'm a coach, I'm a person that doesn't live in absolutes. So if I want to enjoy like a really nice glass of wine, I love like the, the act of it, like sitting down with people you're enjoying, having a good cocktail, just having a conversation, I'm gonna do that. But my perspective really did change um, from someone that was much more of a social drinker to someone that now enjoys one to two drinks a week, even at that. Um, I mean, with the holidays coming up, I even said to myself last night, I was like, mm, I could kind of go for a glass of wine, but it's going to be the holidays. My parents are coming to stay with us. I'm going to have a glass of wine couple while they're here. So I'm much more um, as a coach, as a person aware of how I want to integrate it into my lifestyle and knowing that it's not necessarily the greatest thing for our body, but mm. there there is still a way we can do things mm -hmm. with balance and balance looks different for everybody. So I think that's the biggest mindset I want you all to remember is that what is balanced for me, what's balanced for Maddie is not necessarily what's going to be balanced for you. Um, and you have to find your own balance because I was just chatting with um, a client the other day and she wanted to reduce her own alcohol intake as well. And I said to her, we got to like, make it manageable because if you do like dry January, you're probably going to go back to normal drinking, whatever your normal is in February. Mm -hmm. So find a realistic approach. So my stance is very much trying to have some balance, living my life, doing what feels good. But ultimately my driver is like, what's my goals? How, why, why am I actually having the glass of wine? So it's, it's a very, uh, thought out process mm -hmm. and it always yeah yeah no that do? makes sense um here's my beautiful smile <laughs> i was listening that's why <laughs> um thank you though but uh for me i have a very not a i wouldn't say a weird relationship 
I just never got into alcohol, um, into like the act of like just drinking, like how you enjoy it, like casually and with friends. Sure. Um, because I got super sick right before I turned 21 and I was on medication to where you could not have any alcohol. So I was started that a little bit after my 21st birthday and I had like one or two drinks and then that was it. So then I was on that medication for a good amount of time and I was just kind of got used to not drinking. So then like those time periods where you are drinking socially, trying different things, finding stuff you like, I never had that. So that was a little bit different for me. Now I'm not on that medication anymore, thank God. Um, but I still never developed that taste for things um, just out of sheer, like what my circumstances were. But also like, I just really love to eat food. <laughs> <laughs> like if I had to say, like, even if I didn't get sick and was put on medication, like I just really like to eat food. And if you're going to say you could have, you know, 200 carbs of, food, but say potatoes or rice, I'm probably going to have potatoes or rice and not a drink. Yeah. And that's just something I've always kind of been like a foodie, not so much of a drinking person. Um, and I think that has just obviously changed. Like, I've never been the social drinker. I never really found myself going to bars because of like my personality. And again, being out being very sick, I wasn't going to bars and things. So it was very situation based. Yeah. Um, and then now, um, with my husband now, he has pared down his drinking a ton uh, since we met. So it's just kind of like, you know, different stages of your life where I don't necessarily always go hang out with people at a bar. We do different things or I'm like, let's go for a walk. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't like, I did meet a couple friends um, at bar restaurant and I just didn't get a drink because it's just like not that kind of for me, it's just like, what's your personality? What do you like to do? If you like to drink, that is totally fine. But back to what you said, and we could touch on this later as well, when you're working with clients that want to, women that want to lose weight, it's very like phased based. Like, okay, if we are in this phase of we are focusing on fat loss and seeing the scale go down every week, seeing the inches come off does alcohol fit with where we're at right now? And a lot of the times it doesn't. Yeah. Um, so that's something that can be hard for some people to accept. Um, and we can definitely talk about that more, but kind of also what you touched on being that like, I am very also, I'm not all or nothing. I mean, I don't know exactly what your background is with um, like personal background when it comes to like learning about yeah. food. Like, I legit remember writing a list, no and yes. Yeah, I, <laughs> and that was how, yeah. yeah. I can relate to that. I mean, it wasn't a list, but it was, it was a mental list. Mental it was, list, yeah. It was a absolutely not, or we're being really bad if we do this. Yes. And so I think that's where my, as a coach, that's where we can relate. We don't want to perpetuate that to our clients. It's not necessary. Unfortunately, we experienced it, but we get to be that change, mm -hmm. which is really awesome. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's kind of like where I came with it. And now, like you said, we do both have women that we work with that want to drink. That's totally fine. It's just understanding what's going to happen when I have this drink. Why am I having this drink? Where does it fit alongside my goals right at this moment? And yeah. that's where it's like, that's how you truly get to say is like, is this, hurting my progress or is this like part of my progress because if you are a binge drinker and you're learning to regulate it more and not be a binge drinker then it is part of your process of learning yeah oh i love that is it hurting your progress or is it a part of your progress mm -hmm. because with the the experience that i have of working with clients it is a lot of all or nothing but the idea that we can still make progress and enjoy your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now it means you can go balls to the walls, have a bottle of wine, an entire pizza. Mm -hmm. That's not mm -hmm. thing, but it's like, yeah, if you want to have a glass of wine, a slice or two of pizza, let's add in a protein. Let's add in a veggie. And that's balanced. And we're not doing it every night, but we can find a way certainly to live your life and to also be able to make progress. And again, it looks different for everybody, but I really like how you phrase it. I know that, that was just so off the cuff. You're like, oh, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I will be writing that one down. <laughs> um, but I think it's also just like coming from two 
quote unquote health coaches, you know, understanding that like, you know, most people would say, even I'm sure you get this a lot, like, oh, you don't eat that. She eats only healthy. The number of times I got that when I worked in the gym, people were like, oh, I bet you never eat bad. I'm like, no, that's not actually like I do have stuff that I enjoy. And same thing applies to alcohol. Like we're going to have things that are quote unquote bad, but only because we don't see them as bad. We just see them as part of literally yeah. living. Yeah, it's, it's a big, uh, for a lot of people, it's a big trigger around the holiday season, which we're coming up to. You usually have like your Aunt Karen or your grandma and they're like, you're going back for seconds or you're eating that. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, they never got the chance to unlearn that. Mm -hmm. But that's why we do what we do because we're teaching women that, it, that doesn't actually exist. The idea of that's bad doesn't actually exist. It comes down to your mindset, your goals, how much you are consuming. And this goes to alcohol as well as food, all different things. So it's a really important conversation here that we're diving into because it, it has so much to do with the mindset and understanding of your own goals and what you're doing for your goals. Right. No, that's perfectly said. Um, Let's go to client experiences. And if you, you want to start with this one? Yeah, sure. So I have had, I have had clients that are a little bit more of, of party and they really want to enjoy themselves. They love to drink. That's their real social thing. And that's not necessarily my place to judge. I don't care what you do I just care that you're healthy you're taking care of yourself you're you're happy we're making progress I care about a lot of these things but I can't tell you exactly what to do so there have been client experiences where they've almost gotten upset with me because they're not making the progress that they want they're like I'm hitting my steps I'm eating my protein I'm working out like nothing's happening and so hey okay. like let's take a breath like it's okay um let's take a look at how much we're drinking or we're not drinking enough water like what are we doing and we come down to uncover oh you know i usually go out for happy hour after work. we get like you know three four drinks and then we usually get some appetizers and you know then we're going to the brewery like working with women in their 30s is a lot of like bringing babies to the breweries and like it's kind of a fun thing to do do but at the same time we have to ask ourselves like okay we need to take responsibility for our goals and so to bring this awareness up to them and say okay like you know are you maybe overdoing it a little bit because you can go to the brewery you can get a cider if you want like our, a beer i can't drink beer so i drink a cider but then i might switch to like a seltzer water and i'm mm -hmm. as long as i have something in my hand like i'm drinking a coffee i might have a water mm -hmm. it it gives you that same experience. A lot of people are like, ah, FOMO. And it's like, you can still participate and be a part of the group, but also be mindful of yourself. So it can be tricky with clients um, because if you tell them not to do something, they're probably going to want to do it 10 times more. Um, I'm sure you can relate to that. I mean, even in my own experience, when I was working with a coach at one point in time, it was not the best fit. Um, she had told me to cut out X, Y, and Z. And I was like, uh, no, like I definitely want to run in the other direction and do it 10 times more because yeah. you're not telling me no. So it can be a hard conversation to navigate. What is, what is your perspective on that? I mean, have you had these types of conversations? Did they go well? Was it a little bit stressful and awkward? I mean, we're working with adults. Mm -hmm. So it can be a fine line to be like, I'm, supporting you i'm not parenting you <laughs> yeah yeah and this can really be applied to so many things like within just nutrition in, in its own and kind of like you said like like with your own experience with your coach when you say when they said like ali don't eat x y and z it's like then all you're thinking about is x y and z and that's all you want and that's all you're going to get essentially yes so it's like unteaching them that you know like right now besides alcohol you could say the closest thing we have for a food thing is like cookies christmas those things and i've had clients say like oh i ate a ton of cookies i'm so bad like no you're not bad like 
if food does not make you, does not have a uh, correlation to how you are as a person, if you're good or bad, evil, whatever, it's not. It doesn't have a moral, you know, compass on you. So it's the same thing with alcohol. Like, it's not bad if you have five beers or five this. It's just, does this make sense to the plan right now? Yeah. And I think that's the hardest thing to unteach someone is to take away, like, this is bad to this is just, you know, does it make sense? And if it doesn't, that's okay. And like reflecting on why it wasn't okay. Yeah. And one of the most recent things actually was um, a newer client and she was like, made a correlation. She's like, wow, I realized I was using alcohol as a reward slash coping mechanism for what was happening. So had a super stressful day. She had one or two, three ciders. You know, maybe had a great weekend, had some more ciders, things like that. And it's not that, you know, on your birthday, you're going to have cake, you're going to have these things, you're going to celebrate. But if you're using alcohol as a coping mechanism for things that are happening in your life and continuing that over and over and over, making that a habit, that's just kind of a recipe for, you know, a, a downfall for every time something small happens, this is how you react. Totally. Right? Totally. And it's... It's so so funny um, because you hear all the time and mm, guilty of it. I remember this one time I was a senior in college and this gas company near our college was like, shit was literally blowing up. It was so scary. We were literally like evacuating. Um, and I drove to my parents' house and I was like, oh my God, I am so stressed. And my mom's like, oh, I got you a glass of wine. And that's not... It's not like the worst thing in the world, but in that moment, as I look back to it, it's like, Allie, you're so silly because you being stressed in that moment, you could have taken a couple of deep breaths, just gone for a walk, regulated mm -hmm. your nerves. But having that glass of wine, yes, it makes you feel a little relaxed because you might get a little buzz, but ultimately it stresses your body out more. Mm -hmm. That's not what people talk about. It's like, oh, I'm relaxing at the end of the night. Let me have a little glass of wine. Yeah, that might make you feel good for a minute but you're probably gonna sleep badly mm -hmm. it doesn't de de stress you it does worse for your body and again not a not not necessarily a thing you can't do but it's just knowing what you are doing in these situations it's all about having the awareness and then acting on being aware whether you're gonna maybe lean into a decision that makes sense for your goals or you're in a mood and you're like, fuck it, you know what? I am stressed and like, I'm gonna have a glass of wine and I know it's probably not gonna make me sleep good, but I don't care. And you can knowingly make those decisions and say you don't care. Um, but then if that becomes a pattern, mm -hmm. or, I don't, or I don't care, and then I'm looking on the scale and I'm like, why is this not working? I've done everything right. Mm -hmm. Well, we gotta go back a little bit because if you don't care five, 10 times, you're not doing everything. And that's why the progress is stalling or not being made. So again, it's just really about this awareness, which a lot of us, we don't have the opportunity to really have these conversations all the time because not enough people talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, I mean, a a lot of people I've talked about this before multiple times know hopefully by now that, you know, when you, if we're talking caloric balance here, plain and simple, when you scan something, a glass of wine, glass of this, my fitness pal, whatever tracker you're using is not going to calculate it correctly. Nope. Okay. <laughs> if anyone didn't know that, now you know. It usually has a decent amount of calories that are not accounted for because alcohol is kind of its own thing and, you know, companies aren't going to make the nutrition label make sense. So your, you know, low cal beverage usually has, I think it's like 20 to 25 carbs. Yeah, like it, White Claw is such a good example or like yes. the 99 calorie beers. Um, I was literally on a, a call with a new client the other day and she was like, well, yeah, white claws have three carbs. And in my brain, I chuckle a little bit, not, not as like a diss to her, but it's because the, we're not giving people the information. If you have a, a drink that's a hundred calories and we're breaking it down into carbs, we're going to divide it by four. 
So that's 25 grams of carbs, yet it's advertising only three grams of carbs, mm -hmm. low calorie drink. And yes, 100 calories is a lower calorie option, but because like you said, alcohol is just, it's not regulated the same way. We don't have to put all of the facts on, you know, a label because it's just, it's not food. Um, it has a different category. So it's mm -hmm. so, it really kind of damages the perception. You know, you have an individual thinking, I'm doing all the right things. I'm, I'm staying under, you know, X amount of carbs, or I'm eating this amount of carbs. I'm doing the right thing. And unknowingly, you know, they're, they're making mistakes because the information is just not correct. And that's frustrating. Exactly. Yeah. So they think they're making a better choice, which maybe they might be, but and still, they're still racking up, you could say racking up the debt of calories yeah. <laughs> and carbs. So it's kind of like understanding, hey, there's more in here than what's actually like being presented. Yes. And understanding that just from a body basis in general, like alcohol is going to make your weight spike. Doesn't mean you gained five pounds overnight. No, it just means you're a little bit inflamed and your body weight's going to take a few days for it to come back totally. down. Totally. And I think most people want to walk away from this conversation being like, okay, like, can I drink alcohol? Like, yes, you can. It's just asking yourself, like, what makes sense for right now? Yes. Right. Yeah. If you're trying to lose weight, like actively in a diet phase. And I like to say diet phase because diet is just like thrown around yeah. willy nilly. If you're in an actual diet phase for a set amount of time and you're going to be coming out of that diet phase, and if you're like, what the heck is she saying? <laughs> and you're in the right place, meaning you're in a caloric deficit and you plan on coming out of that, which you need to for a diet. But if that's your focus right now, having alcohol and extra, you could say any food in general that's going to take up a lot of what you're eating that day in a diet is probably not the best choice. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, if you're coming to this conversation and you're looking for an answer, can I drink? Should I drink? What What the hell's the deal? The choice is up to you. And this is really why it's such a good conversation because Maddie doesn't drink. I drink occasionally. Um, I am definitely the type of person that will probably enjoy more drinks around the ho like holidays with my parents coming into town, but then I'll go back to my normal. And so I'm not going to very likely weigh myself because I know the, the, it's going to be up. And it's not because I gained a bunch of body fat, um, but it's because alcohol is it's not good for us. Yes, we can have a good time and use it responsibly and enjoy ourselves. But if we're looking at like, is it good for our body? No, but that doesn't mean you can't have it. But it's like Maddie said, is it going to serve you? Like what phase of life are you in? And just having the awareness. Um, I was super interested the other day. I was um, passing a subway. It was in a Walmart. I live in Vermont. So like, I feel like in the Walmarts, they have like everything. Like they have a hair salon. They got food, like <laughs> iconic. So I was looking at the nutrition facts and a meatball sub, like a foot long is over a thousand calories. Wow. And it's just interesting because if you're somebody that is trying to lose weight and you're following a strategy, maybe let's say you're eating 1800 calories. If you had one sandwich, that's a thousand calories. You're expected to then divvy up 800 through the rest of the day. That, that sucks. Like that is a recipe for disaster because you're going to be mm -hmm. angry. You're going to be like cranky and be like, oh my God, I hate this diet. It sucks. And the same thing can happen with alcohol, you know, where, oh, I'm going out tonight or I'm going to a brunch and I want to track my alcohol because I want to stay in this deficit. But you almost end up overdoing it for your goals. Mm -hmm. And shit, I am, am so starving and it's the end of the day and I literally have a hundred calories left. So you either suffer through it or more realistically you eat because you're hungry. Mm -hmm. And so you're taking yourself out of the deficit probably once a week. And so again, it, it all has to just go back to like asking yourself what your goals are and what's manageable. Like mm -hmm. I, our mentor always says this to us, like asking yourself, what's your capacity? Do the same thing for yourself in your own fitness and nutrition um, journey, asking yourself, what is your capacity? Um, and that gives you a lot of clarity as to like, okay, what can I 
actually handle? Um, how much can I actually fit into my daily allotment of calories? And maybe I need to make smarter choices. Yeah. And back to what you're saying, like, you're not going to have any food left. Like I just went through a diet phase and I'm almost out of it. Yeah. And if I were someone that like did drink alcohol, would I have drank alcohol when I was like, low at like 1600 calories like that's low for me very low yeah. no I would not because I would have given up two or three hundred calories when I would have rather had something that's way more filling I'm not like gnawing at my you know hands with them starving all day like that's personally why I you know advocate for not drinking while you were in a strategic diet phase because it's going to be way easier to get through when you're hungry because news flash in a diet phase you're going to be hungry yeah. that's just that's just kind of how those things go if you want to lose weight um but it's just figuring out what makes the best sense for me in my position right now and what my goals are and understanding is like if you notice you have a um you're using alcohol as a reward system or a coping mechanism First, becoming aware of that and then, okay, managing it, getting help if you need to get help with it, and creating new coping mechanisms so you don't keep repeating that for the rest of your life. Because even I was watching Friends the other day or something else, like, they all do that. Like, mm -hmm. there was another show I was watching. I wish I could remember. Maybe it was a reality show. But they just automatically pour a glass of wine. Like, oh, I've got to get the wine out. Like, Real I could... Yes, yes. Of that. Yeah. It's like... Yeah don't know necessarily what time they're filming but like you'll just like drinking up, time my apartment. it's like oh, should we open some champagne and like it is such a norm in our yeah. world to to just use alcohol as as a super super social thing which in the right amounts it's perfectly fine you can still see results but we have this like oversaturation of like Oh, the girls are coming over. Let's pop some champagne. We're drinking, blah, 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 blah. And you're looking at these women and you're like, they look like in really good shape. Like, I wonder what they're doing. And like, the reality is like, they have a lot of money. They could be like getting plastic surgeries or different things like that. And yeah. they give this like yeah. perception of like, like, oh, you can drink all the time and stay thin and like live your best life. And it's like, mm, well, like, let's talk about that. Cause that's like not super normal. Uh, that's kind of funny to bring that up that I honestly have thought that before I'm like how do they do this but yeah they probably have a chef they probably have like you said they probably get work done they probably do a lot of things probably a lot of cardio who really knows what but say it again I, didn't I said it. things we don't see yeah. yes yeah exactly and it's just like we're the common folk <laughs> what, <laughs> what what's impossible with what we can do drink like I always say this when someone asks me if when they say like Oh, I had a cookie and I'm bad. I say, listen, like in my diet phase and currently now living, I eat chocolate every single yeah. day. I literally have eaten chocolate every day for, I don't know, years probably. Yeah. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I eat a crap ton of quality food all day long. And I always have a little bit of set aside for chocolate because I love chocolate. Yes. Does it yeah. make me bad when I eat it? No. Does drinking alcohol every day make you bad? No, but it might be affecting you more than you really realize. 100%. And, and, a, and a couple minutes ago, you said having a strategic dieting strategy. Now, if you're watching this, if you're following us, you, you very likely fall into the category of not dieting strategically. You might have done keto. You might have just cut your calories way down. You're trying things you see online. And we're talking about a strategy that is like science-based, but also takes into consideration your human factors. Like mm -hmm. we are looking at strategies that really serve you. So yeah, in a dieting phase, you might be a little bit hungry, but we're also going to give you the information and the tools to be like, okay, this is how you can feed yourself and nourish your body and feel full. Um, versus when you're focusing on like just a random low calorie diet, you might, and this comes into another story. Um, I was on a potential client call like 2019 with a gal. And she was like, I was interviewing with another coach. And she said I could eat 1200, 1300 calories five days a week so that I could go out and party and drink a lot of alcohol on the weekends. And maybe you 
you see yourself in that story. Maybe people watching see themselves in that story. And that's where drinking and your fitness goals become a problem. Mm -hmm. If we're doing it in a way that's strategic and we're being mindful and we have a plan, you can still see results. I mean, the best way to see results is no drinking, but that's not rude of life for some people. Exactly. We might have some people that choose to not some people that still want to drink. So again, we find that balance, but it all has to do with a strategy. And I mean, as a coach who doesn't drink, do you ever feel like it's, it's hard to like tell your clients this? Cause I mean, I even probably drink much less than my clients. Like I, I don't drink as much as I did just cause I'm like, I feel older. I'm 25. I'm not that old, but like, it just doesn't make me feel good. Do you ever struggle with trying to relate to them and, and really break through to them? Like why this is such an important topic for us and because we care about their goals. I don't know if it's just that I don't call in as many women that may have an issue with drinking because that's not something I show because I don't drink. That's so it's kind of, so that I think that's part of it. Um, do I have women that do drink? Absolutely. But I treat it the same um, mindset of with food and with foods that are deemed unhealthy. Yeah. You know, like I said, like we can have those things. It doesn't really change if we're good or bad. But if it's not going to make sense for the plan right now, then we probably shouldn't have it as much. Yeah. So that's what kind of makes it like easier because of course, like I can't relate as much, but if, you, if I just think about it as food, because totally. it's basically something you're ingesting, that's food really, and then it makes the most sense. Um, what I do have is around the holidays. I would say the one thing that like they struggle with the most is just like, keeping it all together, you know, and then not letting the drinks pile up. So it's just creating that bare essentials in their mind of like, okay, I'm going to get water yeah. in. I'm going to eat uh, protein. I'm going to make it through the holidays. And if I have a few extra drinks, it's not the end of the world, but I need to know when to like reel it back in. Back in. That hundred percent. It's like, I call it like my, like my client toolbox, like their toolbox for success. You call it like, the, the the bare essentials um it's knowing especially as we go into the holidays how to navigate it like i said i myself i probably will have more drinks than i usually do which i'm okay with i'm not stressed about but i'm going in with a strategy i'm not planning on like being shit based like i want to maybe I have three drinks or i might have like some baileys in my coffee on christmas morning but i know that like okay i need to get in water i need to get in protein um, I need to not weigh myself after maybe a couple days of drinking because it's going to be a blow to the ego. I'm going to be like, mm, oh man, I'm upset. Like this sucks, which it does mm -hmm. suck. See that number go up. But again, it's all about having a strategy and it doesn't mm -hmm. make you good. Like when you're thinking about like Christmas cookies or like we're having lasagna on Christmas. Oh, I am so excited. Like years ago, I would have thought, ugh. I'm going to be bad and have some lasagna mm. yep. now. Yep. This is some carb carbs, some fats. We're going to make some turkey meatballs. I'm going to get some protein in. I'm going to listen to my body and enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. And we can do the same thing with alcohol as well. It really is all about just creating that awareness. And then honestly, pulling your shit back together. Once things slow down a little bit, not throwing yourself into an extreme plan, but thinking to yourself, okay, let me get back to the basics. Let me get my steps, my protein, my water, and things will go back to normal, which is, I, I would say that's people's biggest fear. And that's sometimes maybe why they ignore how much alcohol they're drinking or not wanting to try and lose weight or change their lifestyle because they're afraid it's just not going to work. And like, that can be really discouraging. Yeah. And I think where people struggle with the most is where they trying to get back on track yeah. is because they're living in a very restrictive world to where once the holidays come, they let all loose food included and alcohol. And then because they never practice just having it here and there yeah. and not letting it become such a big thing and such a big, like, I can't have this. I can't have this. Then that's why they struggle so much just getting back to normal. Yeah, so you got it right there. That was like, so, so true. Because a lot of people 
that I've coached in the past, they came to me and they're like, oh, I used to always do dry January. So December would kind of be like crazy because I'm yeah. not going to have it. And that's just a reoccurring uh, obstacle that Maddie and I see, whether it's with our clients and alcohol or food or over exercising. When we restrict too much, eventually it just pops and then we have no control and that can feel really hard. Yeah. And one thing I want people, everyone to ask themselves when they watch this is like, what would it be like to not live in a world of such extremes? Yeah. Like yeah. imagine and just living in a flow of like, oh, this is just balance. I'm focusing on balance. And I think for a lot of people, like if anyone picks their 2023 word for mine, I think part of mine actually is like trusting myself in balance. I got trusting myself too. Did you do yeah. a little like the word searches? Oh, no, I asked Lacey, <laughs> <laughs> our mentor. I was like, what do you think I should? She goes, oh, trusting oh, myself. <laughs> I love that. I kept seeing Instagram like, these little uh, word searches and it's like the first four words you see uh, are oh. what you bring into 2023 and I was like okay so I saw them and I literally uh -huh. went down and I'm like I'm gonna come back to this show <laughs> which is funny me asking Lacey yeah. what do you think it's just like, oh, I know I just we need to work on that together <laughs> but if you don't live in such extreme fitness right yeah. same thing food how you um you know, what foods you eat and what foods you can't eat in your brain, yeah. how you treat alcohol, then you won't be coming to the new year every year, like literally crawling your way out of yeah. that extreme of the one side where you're eating everything in sight, not doing anything, not moving your body, because what's the point? You know, been there, so I know that feeling. Yeah. And then, you know, in a couple of months, you're going to find yourself in another unhealthy place where you're doing so much and you're tired. Yeah. So that's the one thing I hope people take from this is that like you don't have to live in extremes and just practicing having things in moderation and also asking yourself, does this make sense for my plan right now? It's going to give you the answer of like what you should be doing. Yeah. And I would kind of piggyback on top of that when we're asking ourselves, does this make sense for me? An exercise I often do with my clients is when we are first working together, I ask them to write down their why. And I'm like, let's not make a surface level. Like we are going deep. Think of like an, a hundred year old tree. It got deep ass roots. So go deep. We're not just trying to lose 20 pounds to fit in our genes. Like there's a bigger reason behind that. And so if we have a deep rooted why, and we're trying to make a decision like, okay. And this was a conversation that I had with somebody close to me. Um, they were like, what's the point of just eating one whoopie pie? Like I want to eat three. Like there's no way I'm just eating one. And my thought is, well, there is a point to eating one because we can have one and we can say that was yummy. And then we can also be like, okay, but like, what are my goals? Like, I don't need two more. If I'm hungry still, let me make myself a proper meal. And when we're deeper, we're deep rooted into our why we can then use our like critical thinking to say, okay, is this going to serve me? And I don't want to make it sound easy. It's not easy at first. But that's why we practice. That's why we write down our why so that I can go to the dessert table and grab a couple of gluten free things, have something and then be like, I'm, I am in a dieting phase. So I'm going to chill. If I want more tomorrow, I can have it. Or from a week from now, I can have it. And, and it's really trusting yourself and trusting your goals and your why that you're making the right decision. But mm -hmm. that's, that's almost a muscle you have to practice. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's easy to forget why you're doing something in the moment, for sure. Very easy. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to only have like two espresso martinis. Like that's kind of, you know, maybe four, 500 calories. And then you're like, oh, shit, I am kind of hungry. Those loaded nachos sound pretty good. And you see the, the spiral start to come out. And this kind of makes me want to talk about um, like even just low cal options or non-alcoholic options. Like I have been loving liquid death. Have you ever had those? It's just like, isn't, isn't water. that water? Yeah. But it's amazing. It's like, it's not this, but it's in a big can. It like has this like badass marketing and they serve them at a lot of like bars or places where they serve alcohol because you blend in a little bit, you know, it looks like you're mm. here or something. And people 
I mean, I'm not friends with people that would pressure me to drink, but it allows you to kind of fly under the mm. radar and not, Fit in. oh, I'm missing out. Cause that's, you know, can be a huge anxiety for some people. Um, but I personally, like if, if it's the holiday season, I am going to have an espresso martini or, or a peppermint martini, but I'm also gonna like use my common sense and say, okay, these are a little bit higher calorie, so I'm gonna have no more than two. And I'm a lightweight, I don't yeah. need it. Like, let's be your <laughs> alley. Um, if you're I'm, lightweight, I don't know what I am. <laughs> oh, girl, oh, girl. It's, I, I can have like a glass of red wine and I'm like, I'm buzzed. I, it's, it's so ridiculous, and it's, but it's iconic because then I'm like, I don't need more and I can trust myself to not need more. Um, yeah. But I love, you know, if you're trying to look for some low cal options, um, cause you wanna go out and enjoy yourself, but have that limit, like, you know, a vodka soda or a tequila soda, asking if they have, you know, diet drinks mm -hmm. um, and things. Um, and really just using your better judgment and thinking, okay, like if I know myself, I can have two martinis. I don't need any more than that. So I don't need to like perpetuate it and be like, oh, I'll have one more, one more, one more. No, mm -hmm. I'm gonna like remind myself we're good after two. I'll grab, mm -hmm. maybe I'll grab a seltzer water, something that looks fancy mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and still, so I don't feel tempted. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's not as complicated to to find those, those options once we're aware yeah once and for someone that doesn't drink at all i yeah. i would totally do a liquid death because like you said if you fit in more it looks kind of cool they're so fun like i i don't even necessarily have them like when i'm going out but i had one on thanksgiving and i was drinking it and james and i were leaving going back to our house and my dad's like oh you forgot your beers and i was like dad that's why I was like, I was drinking <laughs> eight in the morning. And he goes, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird, but I don't want to say <laughs> That's funny. People don't realize. So if you are self-conscious, it's, it's a great option to give you just that feeling of like, I fit in and that's, and that makes me feel like I want to actually stick to my goals. Yeah. And I would do like diet drinks. Like I'm not a, I don't drink diet drinks all the time, but like, it's something nice to add in here and there. It's yeah. not the end of the world. Um, that's pretty much all I've done. Again, we don't go out to bars really, but if we're going out to dinner for a nice dinner, I never, I've tried wine. I don't like wine. I just never grew the taste for anything. Apparently uh, damn, I'm going to have like some extra food. <laughs> yes. Um, but I'll get diet drinks, stuff like that. And if you feel pressured by people you're with to drink more, I hate to say it, but mm -hmm. you might need different friends that are yeah. pressuring you in that way. Because, like, a real friend wouldn't be like, come on, Allie, you're boring. Like, that that's a little bit immature. I mean, if you're in your early, early 20s, then you probably have people that are like that. Um, I think, really, every, any, everyone can make their own decision and needs to know their limits. And if you don't want to go home blackout drunk every time you go out with friends, you know, or if you feel like you are susceptible to peer pressure, then you might need some more mature friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, genuinely, like, I, I can't even think of the last time that a friend would ever say that, like, that would just be such a red flag. Mm -hmm. And it can be hard to put up a boundary with a friend, like, mm -hmm. that's something that can be really uncomfortable for people but if you're in a position where like people are not supporting you then like why do you have enemies like wh why why have enemies if you have these types of friends you need people that like care about yeah. you, you and cheer you on and it doesn't mean that they don't have to drink it doesn't mean you have to give it up entirely or if you want to that's cool but it's just like having really good communication with the people that you care about and supposedly care about you. I mean, I saw on um, Hannah Brandt's story uh, a couple days ago, I think, and it was like, her husband was like, oh, do you want a glass of wine? And she like wrote out the whole story. She was like, I did want one, but I said no, because the holidays are coming up and I'm probably gonna be having more then. And that was the end of the conversation. Like there was no pressure, there was no obligation. And that's how it should be. We should mm -hmm. feel empowered to, make our decision and not get any blowback like 
especially on an issue like I'm not having a cocktail. Like that deserves zero blowback. Yeah, and I think for people that are just starting their health and fitness journey, and this is like a whole other tangent, so I'll make it quick. <laughs> um, if you are with a group of people who haven't seen you make these changes before, they might be more likely. And this is from past experience. This is from clients' experience. If I know this is what happens, people can be quick to judge and also make a comment about what you're doing. Yeah. So if they do make a comment about you drinking less or you changing your food habits or X, Y, and Z, it's coming from a place from them. Um, why is the word blanking out of my mind? They're Fill the word. Dirty? Yes, from their own insecurity that you are doing something that maybe they couldn't achieve, mm -hmm. maybe they've wanted to achieve, they struggled to achieve. So it's not really about you. It's just someone's insecurity. Yeah. And you know, you don't you don't need people like that in your life when you're trying to do a positive thing for yourself. Exactly. It, 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 totally. You're you're focusing on your health, that is the most important thing that you can do. Whatever decisions you're making, if it's pro your health, you should have a lot of support in that. But unfortunately, there can be times where like, if I was really envious of you because you were doing something I couldn't, I might be like, oh, why are you even doing that? Like, that's mm -hmm. stupid. And it's not because I actually think it's stupid but it's because I'm jealous and I wish I could do that. And you're a physical representation of what I'm not able to do. And so just even having that in your brain and reminding yourself, like you don't own people's words. It's not your responsibility, like whatever they're saying, it's really not about you mm -hmm. you because it's just like, I want that. And I, I can't have that for whatever reason. Like there's a plethora of reasons, but it's just easier to, make a, a nasty comment or to like mm -hmm. cheeky and be like, like oh, I'm just being like so bad. I'm just gonna like have another drink. Like, I don't know how you're doing it. Like, mm -hmm. like I've had that a million, million times. I'm sure. And it's, did you ever feel like that was something really hard for you to kind of ignore or were you always really confident in yourself? Cause I feel mm -hmm. There's probably people that are really confident, people that are unconfident, and then somewhere in between. And that can be a, a tricky situation. So that's why it's important to remind yourself that, like, I don't own what they're saying. But what was your experience, if you've ever dealt with it? Um, I, think, I think for sure I owned it more as, like, this is about me and, like, oh, like, I'm being weird, you know? And then, like, I think going into situations – I would like say it first, like, oh, I'm not drinking. And then I would say, because X, Y, and Z. And I always said, because. Yeah. And I felt like I had to give everyone the reason why I'm doing this. Qualify. Whereas, qualify it, yes. I don't know why, if I don't have words today. <laughs> but, Perfect. Yeah, I, I, yeah. qualify. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt, felt like, I think earlier teens, early 20s, I always had to qualify yeah. things. And now, it's just like, this is what I'm doing and I don't need to qualify. Like I can't eat gluten. I can't remember why you can't, but I can't eat gluten either. And I don't like, you know, say anything. I just say, Oh, I can't have that. Yeah. Like, and you know, and if someone wants to think of it's for whatever reason, then they can think about it. Or if they want to ask me, they can, but like, I'm not in charge of like their thoughts and opinions. And it's a lot more freeing when you think of it from that perspective. Yeah. It, 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 it cause the truth is, and our, our mentor says this, like, we don't own it. It's not ours to own. It's not ours to fix. And when you can get into that groove, whether it's about your diet, your exercise, alcohol habits, whatever, because people are always going to comment uh, when you're trying to better yourself and they're not able to do it, doesn't actually matter. Because if you have a plan and you know you're doing things for the right reason, you are able to feel really empowered and kind of just brush things off. Like I have had instances where people have commented on what I'm eating and I'm just like, well, I like it. Like, like oh, isn't that bad? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, it's really good. I'm actually enjoying it. It tastes really mm -hmm. good. Seven years ago, could I have done that? No, I probably would have been like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I have to get this off my plate. I'm stressed. Yeah. But now I don't give a f <laughs> because I'm doing it for <laughs> me. I'm doing it for me. And my goals, but it, it might not happen overnight, as you can see from our experiences, it takes time. Yeah. But once you start to remind yourself that like, 
I'm a bad bitch and I'm doing these things for X, Y, and Z and it's for me and it's benefiting me, then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And it takes time, but it is so worth it to get to that place because then you're just empowered. And like when you're empowered in one area of your life, it's going to carry over. And that's what health and fitness is about. Like we want to empower women. We're empowering ourselves to be this better version of ourselves, which I, I just, I could go on a whole tangent about that. <laughs> I know. I mean, it comes down to like, who were you living your life for mm. to make other people happy or to feel amazing in your body? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. I saw a good post. I, who was it by? Uh, I can't remember. She's the founder of, um, wow. Girls gone strong. Okay. You probably know who I'm I, talking I, about, but GGS, name, but I know what you're talking yes. about. I can't, her name's escaping me, but she did a really good post. I reposted it in my stories and it was like women uh, lift for themselves. Like I don't focus on getting stronger for no one else but myself because I want to be a badass like old lady. Yes. Like with my like nieces and nephews keeping up with them. Like yes. that's like what my goal is. I want to be strong. I don't want to be on a walker. I'm not doing this for someone else. So if you like have a crappy comment about what I'm doing, like why do you work out or some, whatever I'm doing. Yeah. I don't care because it doesn't really matter because you don't make decisions in my life. Exactly. Yeah. You do not make decisions in my life. And that's something so big to remember. People are always going to have a comment. They're always going to have an opinion, but in reality, it, it doesn't matter because they're not making the decisions. And if they are making the decisions for your lifestyle, well, maybe that's a place to reevaluate. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to live my life for so many other people than myself. And that is so debilitating. Yeah. Um, once I was able to let that go, like you said, we do things for ourselves. We're, we we get strong for ourselves. I carried up my treadmill up like two flights of stairs because I can and because I'm I'm doing this for myself so that I can be strong and capable and all of these other amazing things. And it's just a really necessary process, I feel for women to go through um, with a health and fitness journey, reevaluating their habits um, and just going back to where we started, asking yourself why you're doing things. Is it serving my goals? Is it helping me progress in my goals? Is it leading me away from my goals? Just having this internal conversation with yourself is really a game changer. Yeah. Um, I'm realizing it's almost one and you got to go. <laughs> we could talk forever. We literally could talk talk for hours not maddie and my dms it's just like i think it's just like a a stream of content yeah. all the time, yeah. which i love uh, well, well i hope you guys enjoyed this conversation we are most likely going to do more lives because it's just really fun to do them with you um and if you have a topic you want us to talk about um health nutrition mindset obviously we have a lot to talk about about mindset and like personal accountability apparently oh hell yeah. um yeah <laughs> feel free to comment that below um but that's it so thanks for joining us Allie. thanks for doing this with me and uh we'll talk right. soon bye, bye. Daddy. bye everyone bye